Tom here from Orange Systems, and we're going to talk about Caden Live, the open source video editor and the editor I use here for my YouTube channel. This is my editor of choice. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire Sharp Project, there's a Hire Us button right up at the top. If you'd like to support this channel other ways, there's some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. There's also links to our Patreon if you'd like to become a supporter. There is also a swag store where you can get shirts and other items. And finally, if you'd like to have a discussion more in-depth than just the YouTube comments about this video or suggestions for new videos, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com and we can have a more in-depth discussion. All right, now back to the video. So Caden Live is an open source video editor that is cross-platform and primarily it was Linux only first but they have added over here in the download section Windows support uh, as well and they seem to have some uh, Mac OS ports I've, I don't use Mac at all it's been a while since I tried it on Windows uh, I may try it again sometime now that they've got a new version out uh, maybe it's gotten a little better. I always find it a little bit more buggy on Windows. And yes, in the past, it was quite buggy even on Linux, but I've worked through it. And like I said, after using it for a thousand videos and watching all the improvements over the years, it's become a very, very stable project. My preferred way to run it is through App Image, So that's the way we will be launching this. If you're not familiar with the App Image, instead of installing the entire program, you can download a single app image and run it from there as in all the different supporting libraries are compiled into a single uh, image and image that you run so this has been the preferred way so you don't have to really deal with any conflicts and um, modern systems based on ubuntu we have no problem running app image so that's pretty easy out of the box version 20 is packed with a lot of features and it just came out here in april of 2020 and there's a lot of things to go through. You can go through all the previous news uh, releases to see like all the little diff details and changes over time. Uh, but there is a lot of features inside of Caden Live. And this latest version contains a ton of bug fixes and enhancements. So let's get started. I want to show you how to like how I edit. So I certainly wouldn't have time to cover in this video all the features. I also don't use or know all of the features of Caden Live. I know the ones I know very well for what I need to get done to get the editing done. The other thing is I know and I'm aware that other video editors exist and people always will then leave a comment saying, what about? And I just don't have time to try them all and learn different workflows. Um, I've been using Caden Live for, like I said, a number of years with over a thousand videos. I don't plan to change my workflow. I especially don't plan to ever change to a proprietary one unless there's some absolutely compelling reason to do so. And right now I can't come up with a compelling reason to do so. So I'm sticking with the open source Caden Live. This screen right here shows what I'm running on my system, which is Pop OS 1910 with a AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 cores at 32 gigs of RAM. Now, the reason I bring that up is because that question is like, hey, Tom, it seems to run smooth for you, but doesn't run smooth for me. Well, these are the specs of my system that I've been using for editing. I've got a build video I can link to as well for this particular system in more depth of detail. But you get the idea that it's a reasonably fast Ryzen 9 system with 32 gigs of RAM, and we're going to run Caden Live via app image from the command line. Now, normally this is my view, which is laid out in three screens. Now, this would be hard for me to present, so I'm going to do it. I'll show you just real quick what it looks like when I open something. So if we go here, I usually stretch the project out across the middle screen. And then from there, I can do all my editing and the screen to my right is where I'm actually watching the video and the project monitor. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to, and to make this a lot easier to load, we're going to pull load layout and choose one screen, and then makes this a whole lot easier to present for YouTube. So now we'll consolidate everything to one screen. And we're also going to start a new project here. So we'll start with a clean project to get you an idea of exactly how to get started with Caden Live and some of the editing tools that I use. Now I'm going to drag over here, and this is my uh, Dell part two, I think I got one in there, cool. Here's the video I have. And the first thing it did was ask me if I'd like to switch to project. Now I started a new project at HD 1080, 30 frames a second. And this project is at 19, 20, 1080, 60 frames a second. You can mix content of different frame rates. It doesn't have a problem handling it, but if there's no other content and you add content that doesn't match the project with nothing else in it, it'll offer to switch. We're just gonna go ahead and switch up the project to match. First thing it does, there's a little pause and it rendered really quick to render the audio. So now I can drag this down and I get an audio track and a video track. 
And you can see this is like the beginning of that video where I start out but don't really have much to say. I'm just prepping. So we'll go ahead and uh, clip that out. But I want to show you all the shortcut keys. So you can use the keys here, the razor tool or the uh, selecting tool to cut, but it's way easier to use keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to load a little tool called screen key that will display each key I'm typing on the bottom of the screen so you can kind of follow along without me having to say press this, press that. All right, so all the windows are draggable and we have the project monitor and a clip monitor. So the clip monitor is so I can have, and let's just drag in one more clip and we'll drag in, I have no idea what's in this clip. Oh, me starting me starting the video uh, accidentally starting over. But this is where I can take this, click on one of these clips, and I can play the preview clip. Project monitor, which I normally, like I said, have dragged to a screen over to the right, uh, is where you actually see the project that you're working on. And now you can see the keys I'm pressing. So I press S to bring it over to select. And I can drag through this and figure out where I want to start. So first thing I want to do is get rid of the dead space in the beginning where I hit record but didn't say anything. So switch over to X. What I did was I clicked right where the mouse was and I go back over to S, press the delete key, and I'm just grabbing and dragging and sliding it over. Now what this did was, so now it, the video starts here. Pretty simple. Now I'm holding the control key and scrolling the wheel. It won't show that on the screen, but that's what lets you zoom in and out of here. Now, one of the things when you zoom in and out, you right away see, well, there's gaps. And this is one of the things I do in my videos a lot is take those gaps out. So we're gonna go through here and I see this gap. It's uh, me pulling something up. So I'll zoom in just a little so I can get a little closer so I can see where the audio starts and stops. And then we're just gonna press X. We'll go here and then we'll scroll it over a little more to right. Well, you can't see it's behind me. They scroll it like this, there you go. There, then I press S again, select, delete, drag these closer together. Now, another option, and this is an important thing, I just drag this closer like that, but what if, if I had, and we'll just uh, back over to S, we're gonna cut another piece out like this. So we'll go here and select this one and switch over to X, cut, cut, S, delete, and we've left a gap right here. And then let's close that gap. So if I drag this, it's going to drag that. So the another option is if you've got further tracks down there, but you just created a space right here, and even if that space, and we'll drag this one up like this to another track, if we say remove space from all tracks when you cut something out, you can do that, and it'll just bring it over. Out of habit, I'm used to dragging them, but there is that method uh, that works as well in case you've edited further down. Now, the other thing I do in a lot of my editing is speed things up. There are times when things are loading on the screen and well, that's just kind of boring to watch. So we're going to find some loading screen where I'm doing some type of test like right here. Now, the way I do that is really simple. We're going to go here. We'll pick the beginning of it and say, all right, this is where I start testing and this is where I end it. And we'll go scroll in just a little bit more. So I'm getting it to the right spot. X for the the cut tool, we'll cut there, and we'll cut here. So this is the part where the test runs, and I went back to select for S. Have it, just so I know exactly what it is, I drag it up to another track, and if you wanted to add more tracks, this is insert track, we could import another track above if we needed more tracks, just like that. But I won't, I say control Z to undo that. Um, and I'm going to ungroup these because I don't want the audio. Now it does have, and we'll show you when you change speed here, you can do pitch compensation. So you can play something faster without screwing the voice up too much. And that's an option. But for me, it's just a test running. I'm not seeing anything anyways. So we're going to uh, ungroup these particular clips. So we'll ungroup clips. Then we'll grab the bottom one, delete. We'll take the top one, click on it. And then we're going to say change speed. Let's change it to... 2000%, which obviously makes it run a lot faster. Then we'll just drag this over to here. Now, when doing this, and if you've watched this channel for a while, you notice this is a lot of the ways I do the test. We go over here, and when we click play, what it's going to get to is, you notice how it ran real fast, or it's still running real fast, but there's no continuity difference in it. So, it smoothly transitioned because all it did was speed that up and go back. We didn't actually transition to it at all. We just sped up those particular frames and we can go even faster. So maybe I think that's too long to wait for that test to run and we'll change this to 
4,000. There we go. Now it's going to run at 4,000 speed. Now you'll see my system skipping a little bit when it does that, but it still plays it relatively fast. And of course, the final one it goes to render will be perfectly fine. Now what about dragging in different clips and getting them to fade back in and out of each other? Let's, let's show what that looks like. So if we have two clips, and we'll drag another one from somewhere else. Let me go find some more data. Let's look at the studio. What do I have in the studio? Probably this one's got something in there. Yep, there's me actually sitting at the table. And what if we wanted to fade between there? So we want to go from this, but instead of a hard cut over to here, let's do it this way. Scroll over here. Actually, I want to get rid of it. So let's just cut some of those little pieces out like that. Drag it over. I'm going to zoom in a little more. And I left just a little bit of gap of silence. So you can see where the silence overlaps from one to another. And all I did was drag it up to an upper track and say, all right, the sound stops here and starts here. And let's do a nice fade. The easy way to add a fade is right here. There's a lot of composition options. You can go crazy with it and stack them all together. I just generally use a fade, so I'm not going crazy. But they do have a lot of options. So you can get all... Uh, you know, video editing style where you do different swirls and patterns and things like that. Uh, I'm not much into video editing myself, so I don't do all these. It does have slide options where you can slide one frame into the other and move them back and forth. And like I said, you can get crazy with the transitions. I keep it simple and just do a wipe. So if we hit play, we'll watch how that previews. So we'll go here and then I'm talking away and then it just fades into the next scene. Now I grab that fade probably a little bit long but you kind of get the concept it's easy enough to fade that's kind of your own opinion how to do that we'll maybe fade them right here instead and away we go so now it fades a little bit faster that looks a little more reasonable let's see so I'm talking talking and then we fade into the next scene and you can slice up any piece of video and move them between different tracks pretty simple going back and forth now what if you wanted to add like a title to this? How does that work? Well, pretty simple. Now you can add all kinds of different assets in here. And actually, let me pull some more up and drag them in. So Sophos XG, yeah, that one didn't have anything new. Oh, good. I had something in here for VDevs. I think I had a picture of something. Oh, just this. You can. This is just a PNG that is formatted at the same resolution, 1920, 1080. And it does understand transparency. So when you drag something like that on here, just like an image, which that's a horrible scene to drag it onto. Let me find something darker. <laughs> they move to a darker section of the video because it happens to be in white. Uh, let's see here. There we go. If I drag it over this scene, you can see that it's just some white text. Now, the reason I have white text in a PNG like that is sometimes it's easier, well, at least I think it's a little easier if I need to do something in a PNG and drop it over. I will. I'll create it externally in uh, GIMP and bring it in. But the other thing you can do is add a title clip. The titling in this is not great, but this, this is a text. Uh, text title. All right. And we'll go ahead and just uh, move it there. Uh, make it red. There we go. Hit OK. And we can just go drag this over. And you can see it's on top of this particular one. So the tracks composite from top on down. And we can even, uh, just by dragging it, there now this lasts longer. And if we wanted it to fade in, we can do the wipe in. So it fades in like that. So pretty simple to do the titling. Now, if you need to edit that particular title and something, it's just kind of a pain because of the way this works. If we go here to add a clip. You notice it's not showing me the video behind it. You actually have to do this. You have to drag it. And now it's down lower. So not particularly great when it comes to titling. This is a very weak spot. I'm aware of it. But then again, I don't really need a lot of my titles for my tutorials. It's just usually some text if I have to throw it in there. Mostly I'm sharing step-by-step -step what I'm doing on the screen and screen recording. So this part doesn't bother me much that it's missing. It'd be cool if they had some animated titles in here. They have ways to very basic do slide back and forth with animation, but 
there's not a whole lot in there for that. But let's go ahead and show one more thing. So if we have picture and a picture type thing, so now we've dragged two videos, but we don't want them to overwrite each other. We want one to be in the corner of the other. Now, I'm normally doing this OBS, so it's not like I have to have it done that way. And actually, let me delete that because we can probably just take the talking head of me here. We'll trim. There's me talking head at that part of the video. What if I wanted me instead of talking head there? We're going to go and go to the effects. So right now it's like there's two videos, me in the corner, then me talking on top. But if we can go here to zoom, position and zoom, and you just drag the effect you want down to here. So now we've dragged position and zoom over here. You notice now we have this little part here and we have a zoom. So let's actually, instead of zooming, we're going to zoom out by calling it uh, 20%. And I can drag me wherever I want. Now, when there's no video below me, I'm there. But when there is video, you can see that I'm here. So you can now drag these around and reset it up. So if you needed to composite a couple different videos at different scales, different sizes, you could do it like that. That's another that's another option to do it. Now it does support, and this is consistent across most of the uh, effects, is keyframing, and that's what this is. And what a keyframe is, it says let's start it zoomed right here. But what if we didn't? What if we wanted to go here and then go here? And each of these are keyframes, which means we want to do something different at this frame. So frame 0, 100. But then frame here, we want it at 20. So let me show you what happens. Now we hit play. And I come in and slowly work my way and you can see them the numbers moving here down to the other keyframe to a different size so we'll go back over here and we'll drag this keyframe over to here so let's zoom in really fast so we'll go here and that zooms in a lot faster so it all depends on where you want to put those keyframes and of course you can make it even faster by doing this make them really close together and you get a different effect. Now, if you wanted this video, and we'll actually choose it here, and we put it, so we gotta get right on that keyframe, there we go. We can drag it in the preview as well. So we'll drag it right to this corner, like that. Actually, we'll just zero, zero. You can type in the numbers as well. Now, when we play it, we start there, lands all the way over in the corner here. So pretty pretty straightforward on how to do that. Now, the other things you can do inside of here is of course some color grading and color adjustments. Those are also uh, different effects you can apply. They're all kind of the uh, in here. So like they're grouped together like Alpha Transform. If you wanna do gradients, chroma key, uh, data analysis, row scoping, there is some motion tracking that can be done. Uh, gain controls so you can correct the audio and fix if you're like me, sometimes if I pull in different sources to composite a bigger video together, then some was recorded on one device and some on another. Yeah, there's going to be some audio you have to match. You have the ability to adjust the gain on any individual. And any of these effects can be dragged over and what they refer to as a master effect where you drag it to that track. Therefore, everything on that particular track will go on that video. Um, so you don't have to like apply it to everyone individually. Another nice thing, though, is applying things individually if you, and let's go ahead and go back over to the effects, and you can stack effects on a single video. So we'll go ahead and uh, get rid of position zooms. I don't want to do that. Let's say we wanted to recolor grade this video. Now, the reason I don't do a lot of color grading is I don't think it helps my tutorials any. Also, uh, I think the video looks pretty good coming out of my main studio camera. I have it kind of dialed in to get the right contrast that I want. But if we needed to make some adjustments, and we'll look for color. Let's say we want to uh, gamma adjustment. That's something simple. So go back over here. There's our gamma adjustment. There's our same keyframes. And maybe I want to fade out. But maybe the beginning of the video was better than the end. So we'll start there, start there, and then we'll say... Here's the gamma for this part of the, whoop, gotta get it right on the keyframe. So there's the gamma normal. 
we can see the gamma is at really low here, but then from here to here, gamma is really high. And what will happen as it plays through this video It'll slowly increase the gamma as this goes across until it gets to the darker one. And then we swap it back over to light. You kind of get the idea you can go through here. Now, the other thing you're able to do is drag the little lines inside of here for the adjustments for some of the effects too. So you can kind of go through. And there's ones for the volume too. If you're having a volume up and down, you can slowly do key frameable volume the same way and adjust them uh, to kind of finer detail on there. There's also ways you can uh, view this and expand these tracks out bigger, how these are small like this or bigger, depending on how many videos and how much stuff you have that you've got pulled up. So let me close that, close that. Let's say we're ready. We've got this video done. We've got the fades in there and we'll do a fade out as well. Nice thing is when you want to fade it out, you can just go here and it fades out. Just clicking in the corners like one of those shortcuts to be able to click it in there. And if you go to the effects, it just added the fade out. You can adjust the duration pretty easily. So we have a fade out effect right here. Pretty straightforward. All right, and we want to render it. So how do we finally get this project rendered after we're done? Well, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead over here and choose MP4, the dominating format. Works great for YouTube. Uh, uploads very well, renders very fast. And this video is, uh, let's see, how many minutes do we have of video? So we got about 10 minutes of video, a couple cuts, a couple fades, really not much in here. But let's go back over to render. And there's a couple different options in rendering. If you, The first time you run Caden Live, Click on more options. Make sure you have however many threads your system has. Make sure you have that many threads in here, if that's what you want. Uh, generally, you want your rendering to go faster, so as many threads as possible, that's important. Quality, 23192, seems fine for what I'm doing, no problems. And there's two different buttons here, render to file or generate script. Generate script is not something I've explored much, but it actually has the ability to generate an MLT script for uh, taking all the assets and creating a script to render them with, and then you can push them over to another server and actually render them on a separate server. It's, it's definitely an option in there, um, but this being a reasonably fast Ryzen 9 system, it takes no problem to render. So we have 10 minutes of video. We're going to hit render to file. I just left it at untitled. I could have called it whatever. In 10 minutes of video, it says it's going to take three minutes to render. It usually takes a little less. It overestimates almost all the time. We're just going to show though, it is properly multi-threaded and grabs up all the processors to get this video rendering done. It says three minutes and uh, let's just wait. And I'll actually fast forward this part of the video to show you just how fast it renders. Okay, this one actually took a little bit longer than estimated, about four minutes and 31 seconds to render this particular video. There's reasonably, I would say for every, you know, 10 minutes of video, it does take under half the time basis, the number of minutes when I'm editing my video, but that's without color correction. And all of my videos are pretty much exclusively at only 1080, not 4k. Once you go up to 4k, the rendering does go up a little bit and I'll show that real quick. So we're going to start a new project. Okay. I'll drag in a couple of drone videos for my Tesla that were at 4k. And ask me to switch the project to match the 4K. So hit switch. It's going to check these. These are drone videos. So they don't have audio. Drag one of these in real quick. And uh, let's see, we'll just cut a section of it and see how fast it renders. From here to here. Drag this over and we have about three minutes of 4K video. And by the way, it does play relatively fast on this, this system. That's also why I showed the specs at the beginning. It has no problem playing the 4K. It also does have a downsampling option for if it's slower. Plus you can do preview rendering. There's a few other features that are available in this. Let's go ahead and just make sure to leave that back at one to one so I don't forget render. We'll call this one Tesla 4K test. 
render. Let's see how fast I can edit the 4K. So we've got three minutes of video. See it ripping through all the processors. Once again, there's nothing but a couple cuts in here. There's not any real intense work going on in terms of uh, color grading or anything like that. And we'll see how long this takes. All right, and rendering uh, three minutes and 21 seconds of 4K video took about three minutes and seven seconds. And I, I really wanted to bring that part up because I've had a couple of people in, under my last Caden Live videos and people messaged me on this saying they couldn't get 4K to work at all inside of here. It's not something I really had a problem with. Uh, I mean, obviously 4K takes more time to render, but it still gets the job done. And if you do any type of color grading well, that's going to be a whole that will take a lot more processing power and you know the speed of your processor and all that will vary but it is capable of doing it so hopefully this will get you started with caden live and maybe later i'll try it in windows to see if it works but you can too it's the same program if you download the uh, app image i just remember in the past it crashed a lot more in windows but in linux it's been very very solid and running it as an app image and i've been using it as an app image for quite a while now and like i said most all the videos i think Almost 100% of the videos on my channel, like only a handful aren't done with Caden Live. I did some work with a tool called OpenShot a long time ago. I, it just doesn't compare to Caden Live and features and everything else. I'm still only covering a very little bit of what this program can do. There's so many more features that I just don't use and uh, they're not part of my workflow because they're not really necessary, but uh, it is a pretty full featured program and you can't beat the price of it. So being fully open source and free, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.